Hey, this is Tim. I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm I'm creating another video for another one of your projects. Um, at this stage, you should be done with uh, the um, a plastic fork. You should be done with that electronic enclosure with its drawn, and we're going to be moving on to a uh, wind turbine assembly. Um, this, uh, you know, I've been using this project for a, a couple of years now, and uh, we kind of go over assemblies. We go over um, some advanced modeling. And you're going to create a nice model of um, a wind turbine. The other nice thing about this project is a lot of you will have access to um, a 3D printer. And uh, this was designed by a, an old student of mine called Chris Ray. And he did. A, I thought he did a lovely job on um, on this um, this little model. Uh, so there's my old cell phone back in the day and the bottle. And uh, you can see that it's quite a nice size. Each of these are going to be individual parts. Um, I'm I'm guessing that uh, I'm guessing there's people out there that probably um, know a little bit a lot more about aerofoil and wind turbine design than us. I'm sure this isn't. It's probably a pretty poor design and probably wouldn't even work. But the ma the most important thing is it looks good. So you can actually 3D print all of these parts, this assembly, and it looks the business. And we've actually bearings inside of it. So this was it. Um, uh, you know, we've done we've printed out multiple ones of these and. Um, we actually gave one to the Secretary of Labour when she visited our college when we got a large um, grant there years ago and she took one with her so uh, they are kind of a nice thing to have and uh, you, know, you can, look you can print it out, uh, cover it, each of the parts you can actually hit them with something called glazing putty or bondo, um, sand them down and then hit them with a nice um, uh, spray paint, a car spray paint will do the job so this is honestly, uh, model it up and uh, if you have a U print or um, a maker bot, you should print it out. Uh, I think it'll look really nice. So that's it. Um, my students are going to have this document, um, which will help them step by step. These are the main parts. You have the base, uh, the lower mast, the upper mast. Um, you have two, two. Um, they're mirror images of each other. You have the nacelle that has a little compartment for um, two bearings. You have a metal shaft. Uh, you're going to have the hub. And you're gonna have three blades, which are the same part. You're just gonna, um, they're just, you're just gonna array them. So that's it. That's the inside of it. There you have your uh, the two bearings, the turbine axle. Um, it's just a model, you know. And then you're gonna have a little axle there sticking out, which allow the thing to spin around if you want to. Um, I have some questions here. I'll ask my students today. I kind of understand how the how does it all go together. Um, so what are the main parts? Let's let me let's so let me see if you remember them. You have your base. You have your uh, the upper and lower mass. You have your left and right nacelle. You have your hub, and you have your blades. So, the blades are comprised of a couple of sec uh, sections for a loft. Um, I'm gonna we'll go through that now in a second. Um, I used to model this up in AutoCAD back in the day. Um, so I have instructions in in SolidWorks. Um, we have instructions for the nacelle. We're just going to use some lofting there again. Um, you know, step by step, we'll go through it. And then you're going to have uh, drawings for uh, the hub, which looks okay. You have the hub there. Don't we don't close that down? We have the uh, drawings for the mast, and we have drawings for the base. So I'm going to pick the easiest first. I'm going to pick the base. And look, um, all the parts should fit together like a um, like a puzzle. You know, they'll all fit together with good tolerances. So the students, you guys, uh, you owe me four drawings when this is done. This is a two week project, and uh, so we're gonna have class time to do it. I have a feeling if you were motivated, uh, some of you will knock this out in one class. But what you owe me, you're gonna owe me four drawings, and they're gonna look very very similar to these. I'd like a uh, I'd like a real view. Um, a real view uh, photo, excuse me, rendering. I'd like all of these drawings to be on 11 by 17 as well. So look, um, what you should do, let's create a folder called um, wind turbine. Make sure you save your work every 10 minutes if you can. Let's look at the base, let's do the easiest one. Um, right, uh, let me think here. I'm going to do a rectangle with four fillets. I'm going to extrude at 0.35. Then I'm going to revolve this um, this chap 
and then I'm going to take the four cutouts um, with the four holes. So we'll do that. Um, it's four by four. Let's try that four by four and a quarter. That's easy. So I'm not going to, I won't, um, I don't want to nag you too much, but anyone that's printing this out at home or any, anyone that's designing this at home, you should get your hands on a, a 3D printer or, sh you know, I know they're, 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 they seem to be a lot more commonplace now, so you should, you should honestly model it up and um, build it. That's good right away. Let's try that again. There we go. Now what do we extrude it by 0.35? I'm going to create a sketch on this face right here. And we'll do, we'll come up here like so. And let's have a look. Is this a line or is that a curve? Yeah, yeah, that's from um, okay, two and three point two five and two inches. All right, let's see if I can remember all this. Point eight five. Um, and what does it do? It comes down, and then it comes over. Um. I'm still here, I'm just, excuse me for a second, <coughs> oh yeah, right, um, 2 and 3.25, so I'll click the point, I'll go across the centre line, we'll make that 2, and I'll make this 3.25, okay, so that's a fully defined, fully defined sketch, I'm going to exit out of this, and I'm going to revolve. I'm going to turn off the thin feature. Just revolve it like so. Okay. So I have that. Um, what's next? I'm going to draw these four holes, these four holes, and the hole right in the middle, all in one go. I'm going to draw them on this face right there. And I'm just going to draw a circle a circle and so on I'm going to make all these equal now remember um, radius 0.75 now remember when I right click I can get some quick um, uh, whatever th whatever that I'm trying to do quick buttons very very quickly quick selects um, what is this now? 1.5. Now let me just check that. I've marked mar for another already. 1.5. Okay. Right, let's make that equal as well. Alright. 0.25, alright. I'm going to make this and this uh, symmetrical across that. Hold on a second, I'm just going to close my door here. Alright. Okay. We'll make that vertical, we'll make these lads horizontal. Now what's the what is the what is the diameter? Point two five. We make them all equal. All right, I'm gonna make this lad three, and this lad 
three. All right, now why are they going black? Uh, right, so let's make them symmetrical across this line here. They're all going black, lovely job. Let's, our dimensions look good. Let's uh, extrude cut through all. We're left with our base. So right, let's save that, save as wind turbine project. Now we don't want to save it as a JPEG. Let's call it wind turbine base. Now let me think here for one second. Uh, does it go all the way through? Um, I have a dash line here. Yeah, I don't think that hole goes all the way through. Um, I think it just goes to here, right? Um, let's try that again. Okay, let's uh, select the contours. Let's go there, 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 yeah, there and there. Lovely job. Okay, let's right click here, hit the show. Uh, no, we won't do that. We go through the cut. I'm going to select the sketch again. I'm just going to select this lad in the middle. Just him, and we're going to go all the way up to this surface right here, and you'll be left with that. That's more. That that's the way I want it. How do I know that that's that that doesn't go all the way through? You'd know it from that that dash line right there, I'm telling you. So it's these little things that you have to watch out for. Um, yeah, I'm sure it would work the other way just fine too. So be a little bit smaller, a little bit a little bit smaller in height. Okay, that's the that's your base. Um, easy enough. Um, do I want to create a drawing of it first? Um, I'm going to do that later. The base is done. Right, let's move on to the hub. Okay, so we have a hub. Uh, this is good. You're going to like this. This is there's a little bit of a trick in here. Um, know that this curve is a tangent at both points. Use a spline curve with start and end and end and start and end tangencies to achieve this I haven't done this in a while um, so let's create a new part we'll create a sketch on the front plane I'm going to draw an L shape like so and another L shape like so now let's have a look it's 1.5 and then it's 1.5 okay 1.5 and we'll make this 0.75 now um, what are we trying to say we're saying that, that this curve here comes off parallel to that line it, it starts going off and then it starts to bend around but it, it is tangent it is it is tangent um, across that horizontal line and then here if I draw a straight line this is going to be tangent um, I don't think you can do this with a curve, but should we give it a try? We'll try a tangent arc, and I'll go like that. And I'm just going to, now, yeah. Let me try something else. I'm going to try a three-point a three point arc. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this to work, but I'm gonna, I'll give it a try. Hold on. And I'm going to make a center line, which is there, and... Um, I'm back again. I had to figure that. Um, I had to figure out that spline there, but I, I think I figured it out now. Um, so I'm going to put it in. Uh, we start here, and we go to to there, and I'm pressing the escape key. Um, I I I can just. I'm I'm still missing something about splines. There's so, something called spline handles, and I'm having a hard time turning them on. But when you want to create a curve that has to f be tangent. And hit multiple points. You're going to do it using a spline. Um, now, I'll just delete that for a second. Um, let me just put in uh, this center line here. All right. What I can do is I can make this line and that uh, tangent, and I make this line and that tangent. So, um, if you want to get that curve going, you're going to have to construct this little uh, bounding box around it. 
So I have that, and um, hopefully that will work for you. I'm going to exit the sketch. I'm going to go to Revolve Boss Base, and uh, our axis of revolution will be this chap here. And now I have uh, part I have my hub ready to go. Near well, I have bits of it now. Uh, so what do we need? Let's get um, our hole going back. It's a uh, 0.38. It's a 3 8 uh, diameter, and how f it goes in a half an inch. So that's easy enough. <coughs> Point three seven five. We'll egg get out of that. I'll go in a half an inch, and I'm left with that. Okay. Now, what are we trying to do next? We're trying to get the holes to put in the tur the turbine blades. Um. You know, I'd like to let you figure this out yourself, but how are we going to do it? We're going to come up point 0.3, and then we'll do a circular array. So, um, we'll get this top plane here. I'm going to I'm gonna come up point 0.3. You can't smell this right now, but somebody's cooking sausages downstairs. <sighs> Lovely. All right. Um, what is it now? It's a diameter of 0.65. And uh, how far does it come out? It comes over um, a half an inch. No, that's not right. A half an inch right there. Okay. 0.5. Uh, now, where you okay, let's make it uh, horizontal with that. It goes black. We rotate it. What are we going to do now? We're going to go extrude a cut. Now we want to flip around the other way, through all, and now we have ourselves a lovely hole. I'll turn off the plane, and what are we going to do? We need another two of them, so we go and get a circular pattern. Our feature is this lad here. I want to wrap it around this. Uh, what if I click on that face there? It should pick up that uh, center axis. I'm not sure if it is. Let's see here. Is it going to do it first? Uh, I don't think it is. All right. So what do we have to do here? We're going to get ourselves an axis. And uh, if I click here, is it going to pick it up? No. So this will work first. We'd have to just do that. Ah no! Look, look, look. We're making life hard for ourselves. Let's try it again. Circular pattern, features and faces. This guy, the pram, the center of rotation. What is it? pattern axis will this will do and we'll do equal spacing and we'll have three of them 120 degrees out okay there you go so um, let's save this as wind turbine hub beautiful all right I'm gonna right so we're done with the the hub we're done with the base and we're kind of just going through the parts um, the wind turbine lower mast um, me I would just revolve this so you could do it with a loft probably but just revolve will do the job this should be a piece of cake Now what is it? It's the length of 6.5, 6.5, um, this is a half an inch, half an inch, the diameter is 1.5, and I'm thinking this is 1. Right, let's have a look. Um, 6.5, 1, 1 1.25 is what it is, okay. 1.25, let's slow down. 1.25, and then we have a square. Right, so we'll revolve this. Okay. And I'll create a sketch on here. This is just a joint. Um, why why are we why do we have these as separate parts? They could be the same part if you have a big enough 3D printer. 
we were just splitting them up um, so we could print different. We we want to we want this thing to be quite large, but we're doing it through small just small parts. That's all. So it's 0 0.61 by 0 0.61 and 0.5 depth. So that's it, right? That was easy. Um, wind turbine base. Uh, no, let's slow down here. Uh, wind turbine um, lower mount. Is it lower mast? So I'm knocking out these videos today and tomorrow and Monday. They were off. Uh, this the college is closed because of snow. So. Um, that's that's uh, you know I'm going to try and knock out as many videos as possible. So anyway, right, we have um, right. Let's check here. All right, I have the base, I have the mass, I have the hub. Right, what's next? The upper mast. So I just get a new part going. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm lazy. Um, let's copy this. Um, all right, and let's call this. Wind turbine upper mast, and we'll just change this so it's um, six inches in length. Okay, now is there a square piece? Let's have a look. Um, We'll make this six inches and uh, what is it? 1.25 and uh, one inch here. Got that now. We'll get, we'll uh, so at the top here, instead of it being a square, it's going to be a circle um, because there's a shaft going into it, and the shaft diameter is 3 eighths, so 0.375. And what depth do we want? One inch. Right, we got that. Now let's just—I need to slow down. I'm going moving a bit fast. Six inches, and uh, hold on, six inches right there. All right. Um, so I've created the opposite part of the that joint, um, and we made that point six one. I'm just going to make this 0 0.6, just a square of 0 0.6. And how far do we extrude it? Um, 0.5. So if you're going to print out the two parts, um, the upper and lower mast, what you do is you're going to um, use uh, super glue or epoxy or something. You're going to, um, yeah, you're going before you apply um, bondo or a glazing putty, uh, 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 epoxy the two parts together. Uh, you're going to have a little bit of a gap here between the two um, masts. Um, epoxy them together and then treat them as one part. Then you can apply the glazing putty and the uh, bondo to the entire mast, and it will look a lot better. Right, uh, so we've got the two parts, and uh, now we're moving into the di more difficult parts. So, uh, what is it? Um, let's do uh, a blade. We'll do the blades. Now, the blade is made up of, um, you have a, a cylinder here, 
and then we have how many sketches we have uh, one two three four five sketches that comprise that loft um, so we'll start with we'll get that cylinder going so it's point six five What is it? It looks like it's. Um, let's have a look. Where? What depth is that? Does it say anywhere? I don't know if it does. Okay. I think it's. Yeah. Here we go. The extrude distance is one inch. So. Okay. We got that. And uh, let's create. Now let's have a look. It looks like they're from the bottom, so it's three point two five. Three point two five. Four point two five. Six and seven point five. Right. So we have uh, our four. Uh, we have our four um, planes. Now, let's look at the first one. This is. C section two, all right, and we have all our dimensions there. So I'm going to turn off these planes, hide them. Uh, I create a sketch on there. All right. So we have a circle out here somewhere. Now are this are they in line with um right. Okay. There's a lot going on, I'm just trying to I'm trying to process this all at once. Um so let, let me may as well just break it down. So radius of uh, this will be a diameter of 0.4. Okay, this will be a diameter of 0.1. It looks like there's a straight line between them. A tangent line. We make this lad tangent to that. Okay. And then we have. Uh, it looks like this is point two from there. I can I can do that. So from there to there is point two. Uh, so that means that this guy lines up with that. That will be vertical. No. If I get rid of that point two, will that work? Vertical. Okay. Um, I'm just going to trim this bit of it away. And uh, we have this big arc, which is radius 1.64. So we get a three-point arc, and I'll get one point on there, one point on there. And I'm actually intentionally not um, going for the tangents. I'm going to do it now, though, as a second kind of uh, a second step. So I make that tangent. I make this tangent. I'll put a radius of um, is it one point six four? Oh, it's big. Um, okay. I'm just going to do something with that. One point six four. What else are we missing here? 
uh, we're missing uh, the point 0.5 and the point 0.75 so from the center we're from there to there is point 0.5 and from there to there is point 0.75 look at that and it all goes black okay So that's the first sketch. Um, let's just tidy it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, that's the first sketch. Right there. <coughs> okay. I think what I'm going to do is um, they're all kind of the same shape. I think I'm going to copy and paste it. We're going to move on to this next one here. So what's the easiest way? Um, I'm going to turn this plane off. I'm going to turn that plane on. Um, that's strange. click here or I, I, I'm going to click on it press ctrl C I'm going to click on that plane and press ctrl V and now I have a copy I'm going to turn off sketch 2 I'm going to edit sketch 3 and let's put some dimensions back on so what is it um, this is getting a bit smaller so this is uh, 0 0.04 radius is 1.81 we go from there to there is 0.55 and we have 0.58 0 0.58 uh, it's point f radius and then we have the 0.2 all goes black so that's it that's the next sketch we'll just tidy it up a little bit okay and we move up um, plane okay let's turn off that plane let's turn on plane 3 let's copy uh, sketch 3 I'll just click on it and press ctrl C I'll click on plane 3 and press ctrl V and I copy it again so let's turn off this one. I just want to check that one for some reason. It just seems a bit big. Yeah, that seems to be right. Okay. We'll turn it off. We'll edit sketch 4. sketch number four it's a bit smaller radius point one point uh, one two point one two it's it's point one two from there this a bit smaller 1.64 is the big curve what is it point 0.4 and then point 0.3 okay this is a bit strange, it's just sticking out a little bit more there. So this is this point three is gone to the center. Um why is that sticking out point three? Why 
1.64, right? 0 0.12 0 0.03 0 0.3, 0 0.4 Okay, we go with it The last sketch is a point, so um, I'll turn that off, I'll turn off that plane, just for the time being, I'll turn on this plane, create a sketch on it, at the very top, and it's just going to be a point, let's see does that work, okay, um, let's turn all the sketches back on, and let's do a loft. That's it, and let's go OK. I don't know if you want something. Uh, this you have quite a sharp point there. Um, what could we do? Um, we might be able to. Let's just go back to that, and let's do a little bit of a circle. Uh, or let's ha see. Is there any way we could put a little um, fillet on there? I wonder. At a point, no, it's not going to work. Um, it's it's just going to break off. I think if you 3D print it, we'll do a little circle. There you go. That's a bit better now. Okay, so I made that. I think it was fifty thousand. So something just small there. Um, it's too sharp um, So there you are that that's a nice uh, example of a loft there now um, Let's turn off the sketches Hide the sketches and that's it. We just did a, a wind turbine blade So we'll do wind turbine Blade That looks pretty good So we'll save that uh, the next thing we're working on is um, the the nacelle okay uh, if we draw if we draw if we successfully draw one side it's just very simple to um, mirror it over to the other side so the the, the first um, feature of the nacelle uh, is based on two sketches with a loft going between the two of them so um, we'll draw two sketches now what's the di di the distance between them it looks like three inches okay Let me just check something here. Um, I have all my parts there. We'll go new part. I'll create a sketch on the front plane. And uh, what is it? It looks like a straight line 1.9. We'll just start. We'll start here and work our way up and move around. So it's one and then 0.45. Okay, um, I'm just going to get a three point arc, something like that, that'll do. That's 0.25. I'm just going to make a tangent to that line. Okay, and then uh, we need another curve down here, 0.5. So um, we'll come down 0.9 and then come down over 0.5. Point five, a three point curve. I'll just make that tangent. 
pull this back and we need a straight line a tangent line from there to there so I'm just I'm I'm an intentionally just getting a, a, a coincident line and I'm gonna go out there as well and what I'll do then is I'll make a tangent what am I going to do now I'll just trim there's probably easier ways of drawing it than what I've just drawn there but that's it um, we just tidy up our dimensions so it's the first sketch the next sketch is it's three inches away so we'll go and we'll get a uh, plane just give it a second alright let's try that again inches away okay all right let's try this again uh, okay we we'll go we we'll go point six five then we come over we'll get a curve we'll come down we'll get a curve, we'll come over and we'll come up this is 0.65 that's 0.29 what's this one, 0.2, is it how long? Uh, 0.25 let's make this tangent here we go Point five, big. All right. Uh, we'll make this one point two five. What are we missing here? Um, we make that and that line up. Will that help? Not really. Point two nine point nine. Do we get that? There you go. Point nine. Right. Let's turn on the other sketch. I, um, this I know I've been boring the last while. This might you might. This is kind of interesting. This next bit. Uh, right, we have our two sketches. Um, right, let's think about this. Yeah, it's two separate lofts. Mm. Okay. And we're going to get a loft from, from one to the other. We go from there to there. I want I want this first loft to come off here at normal to profile and then start bending down so how do I do that we go star constraint normal to profile and it looks a little bit different okay there you go that's your normal to profile there and then it bends down so that looks good um, that's the first loft the next loft is um, we'll create a plane there it's 0.75 away is it it's a circle it's 0.75 is it 0.75 away uh, one inch away and then it's 0.75 okay we'll make this one inch create a sketch on there make this 1.5 I'm going to draw a line here from there 
to there and see if I can trim this bit of it away. Now I've had actually trouble uh, lofting this before. Uh, I felt like I had to make it a hole, a, a mirror it and then loft it, but we'll see if we can do it. Um, does that work? No. So I, f I figured out this, um, what to do with this nacelle. Um, whatever we try, when we um, loft from this face to that sketch, uh, that's actually better than what I've got. Let, let me see if I can get this to work. I'd be, yeah, there's no way I can get that to work. I'll show you a workaround. Uh, I'm going to delete, let's delete that sketch that we have. And let's delete the plane. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror the whole um, body to the other side. So I'm going to mirror this body across that face. And now I have, uh, instead of having half of it, I have the whole body. And we're going to create a plane that's one inch away. And we create a sketch on the plane. And we'll draw a circle, a full circle instead of a semicircle. And we'll make it that it's... 1.5 inches now watch this um, we go to features we go to loft um, where you I click on this face and then on this sketch and what we want is we want this starting sketch to be normal to profile and then bend down so what do I do I go start constraint normal to profile and it bubbles out and then it starts bending down and it looks a lot better okay so let's turn off that plane and let's click on the right plane I'm going to create a sketch on there and I'm going to go normal to and then I'm going to draw a big a big rectangle and I'm going to let's come on now like so and I'm just going to chop away the other, now that I've done that, I'm going to chop away half of it, the other half. And now we're left with that. Okay, so that's step number two. Step number three is we're just going to take this back end out. So let's remember this number, 0.57. So we create a sketch on here. And I'm going to go from that point down back over and up and I'll make it 0.57 and then I'll exit out of this I have a black fully defined sketch I click on extruded cut and I'm just going to go through all and now this back end taken out okay now what's next um, the next step is a shell so um, the shell is going to be it's 0.1 of an inch so I click on shell, um, I'm going to click this face, because that's the face you want to take away, and I'm going to go OK. And now we have this. Step number five, um, don't worry about these sketches here so much. Um, all we're trying to do is add material, because we're going to be putting in bearings there. The dimensions that you need to pay attention to are these ones down here, 0 0.75 and 1.25 and so on. OK. So... I'm going to create a sketch here. I'm going to select all of these. Um, no, uh, yeah, let's select all of these lines. I'm holding down the control key and I'm going to click offset entities. And I'm going to make a 0 0.05. That's 50 thousandths. I'll kind of explain what I'm doing now in a second. I'm, I'm going to. Um, let, let's, let, let, let me just make it work first, then I'll kind of explain what I'm trying to do. So I've just offset that line all the way around. You, you know that. And I'm going to draw some lines. Vertical lines. I'm, I'm just sketching out, so don't pay too much attention. We're just drawing these lines down. Okay. I'm going to highlight them all and make them all vertical. And from here to here is going to be half an inch. And from there to there is going to be half an inch. 
um, let's get the proper dimensions we may as well it's first one's 0.75 from the front look at that 0.75 and then the next one is 2.5 okay um, and I'll exit out of this and I'm gonna go extrude and I'm gonna go select the contours I'm gonna select that that but I also have to select that little sliver and that little sliver and that and that and I'm gonna rotate it around and we're gonna go flip it and we're gonna go up to next and it will extrude it and it works um, now I had to pick a line that was in the middle uh, if I had picked this line uh, and I had just had picked the overall boundary that extrude up to next wouldn't work if I select these lines um, and you, you think it would work in theory um, but it doesn't so I had to play around with that for a little while um, with with lofting or with when you're when you're doing some extruding up to next and with lofting sometimes you just have to mess around with it um, and that works okay um, so that is step number five um, in in AutoCAD uh, you have to do lofting in order to do that same operation they don't have an extrude up to um, next so I just I kind of included them just for a, a different class as well now the next step we're at step number six and what we're going to do is we're, we're going to revolve in order to put to, to cut out that material for the bearings um, so let's create a sketch on that face and I'm just I'm, I'm going to revolve cut this so I'm just cutting this I'm just sketching here for the time being and it looks like it lines up with the origin um, and then we have some dimensions let's do that let's make it coincident um, let's put a center line in and what is it it's it's 0.85 and then 0.3 And this is point three. Now um, I I've done this before, and I remember this is actually point three one two five. Uh, it's a five sixteenths bearing that's going in there, and we the right thing to do is make them both equal. Now um, what's this hole here? Point two five. Okay. Let's make this, this, and this be all collinear. Um, now let's have a look. Uh, point 0.3, 2.6 is that dimension I need from there to there. 2.6. Um, this we don't really care. We're just trying to bust a hole there in in there. So this can be anywhere, anywhere around here. It's fine. Um, now what's this? The 0.45. So from there to there is going to be 0.9 because it's a center line dimension so from there to there let's make that collinear let's um you know the reality is i can just line that up with that let's go collinear with that and let this guy go collinear with that let's exit out of the sketch um revolve cut and we, what we've just done there is we've uh, taken out the material for a shaft and two bearings so I'm just going to save that and um, let's go back um, step number seven uh, you're going to extrude um, a center portion of material because we're going to have uh, a shaft coming up from the bottom so it's just point six that's the number we need to remember so I'll line this up with that line there we make that collinear and this is 0.6 and what is it it looks like it's uh, extrude depth is a half an inch point 0.5 okay um, and then we want it we want to revolve cut something there because there's going to be a shaft coming up from the bottom so 
So what are the dimensions? 0.9 and then uh, it's up a half an inch. Point oh nine is it? Point oh nine, uh, point one nine, and then I think it's point three from there to there. Okay, so we'll exit out of that. Um, we'll go to uh, Revolve Cut, um, Selected Contours, not that one. This one here. Okay, so we have that. Um, that's it look um, let's close this down um, let's save the nacelle and uh, what we what are we going to do we're going to have to add a few more features to make this work so look, look we'll just save this and um, I'll close this down and let's have a look we have um, <coughs> we have the hub um, I'm going to I'm going to delete that. We're going to do that ourselves. We have the nacelle, we have the blades, we have the upper mass, the base. It might be time to get an assembly going. So I'll browse for. Um, I'm just going to plonk all these guys, all them in at the same time. We have um, the base. What else are we missing? upper mast where's the lower mast um, we've drawn that where's that gone to I'm gonna just find it from somewhere else here really quick no uh, I'm gonna have to draw it out again um, all right I'll pause this so I just went through the videos and I realized um, I didn't even model the the, the lower mast. So um, the best thing to do, um, do I have it opened? The best thing to do is open up your upper mast and go file save as, save it as a copy and save it as the lower, just call it a lower mast, okay? And then what we're gonna have to do is let's, um, let me just open up the drawing I don't know how I missed that. Um, so, what does it look like? It looks like it's um, uh, six point five in length. Uh, let's go back here. So it's quite. It's not that complicated. Um, I'm just. I'm. I'm working on the lower mast now, and I'm just deleting uh, some of the features of the upper mast. Okay. So let's look at this revolve. Okay, um, so it's 0.5 here. The diameter down the bottom is uh, 1.25, which we have. Um, at the top, no, it's 1.5 down at the bottom. And then here is 1.25, I think. Let's check that. Yeah, let's let's revolve that and we have the lower we have the lower mast I'm going to create a sketch on here and I'm going to put in the um, center rectangle I'll make this line and this line equal and it's what is it 0.61 and its depth is 0.5 Okay, let's save that. Okay. Stop going so fast. All right. Um, I'm going to put in this lower mass now, and now we have the majority of the parts. Um, so the base was the first to go in. Um, let me just have a look and see where... Yeah, so this isn't even... It's not even centered, so I'll right click on this base and I'll go float. I'll click on the base and I'm gonna go front plane will mate to the front plane there. 
this face will mate to the top plane and the right plane will mate to the right plane and what I've just done there is uh, I could have done that a lot easier but now the base is centered in the assembly okay so I'll, I'll, I'll mate um, the mast to the base okay um, let's open up and get a plane a front plane and then we'll mate that to the front plane of the assembly is that gonna work yep um, let's mate this concentric surface with that right we can flip it oh. okay and this face with that okay the front plane with this front plane now um, oh, this is all good okay hold on uh, if if you if anyone is actually making this with a 3d printer what you want to do is when you're when you're um, combining these two parts you want to use epoxy and, and epoxy the two parts together let them set for about an hour um, all of these parts when they come out of a 3d printer they're pretty rough they're going to have lots of lines uh, resolution lines the best thing to do to smooth them over is something called glazing putty that's that is um uh, let me see if i can if i can find out let get an image of glazing putty what is it okay um it's used in cars it's like bondo it's it's not as aggressive as bondo um it says repairing holes, scratches and dents in metal. Um, you don't need to, I don't think you need to mix it. I think it sets in air. Um, it's, 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 it's um, excellent for, for um, surfacing 3D parts. So hit it with glazing putty, wear your gloves. You don't need to put a thick layer on. You're just using a very, very thin layer and um, you're covering the whole part. And then what you will do then is, uh, is sand it. You could use a, a um, uh, uh, you could use a sander to do it so um, and what you can do is you can also glue this into the base okay now um, I've applied uh, when I did this before I actually lost about an hour's work I applied some appearances to the, dif the different parts that's up to you um, what I'll do is I'll mate this um, cylinder with this cylinder and then with this face with that that face there now hold on um, we'll make this face with the right face and go okay and now it can't rotate now how are you going to connect this in the cell to here um, let me just get and see what what this is this is 3 8 you're going to get yourself an al aluminium shaft that's 3 8 let's just model it up um, we'll create a new part point three seven five um, what is the, the 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 distance from there to the very bottom is one point five so exit sketch I'm pressing control tab to switch between the assembly to the part we we'll make it 1.5 <coughs> mid plane it doesn't really matter to be honest um, when you make this you're, you're just going to get some 3 8 um, metal uh, get yourself a file and just file the file these little edges here it's going to make your assembly a little bit easier just like so this part is going to be called um, swivel shaft wind turbine swivel shaft we'll insert components there we go ok 
Okay, so we got that. Um, let's mate the hub. So we'll get that concentric surface with there. I'm going to flip it. And then I'm going to go from that face to that face. And they're not going to rub up against each other. It's going to be um, 0 0.02 or something. No, we could make it a bit bigger. 0 0.05. Okay. Um, right. So um, we'll mate one blade with here, and then that face with that face. Now hold on. Um, so I need to think about this for a second. Yeah, it looks. I'm not an I'm not an aer aeronautical engineer, but um, we want to kind of angle the blade in that sort of direction. That we want to make it to look. We want to make it look good. Now, um, I click the wind turbine blade. I'm looking at the this um, face right here. That's the right plane. I'm going to mate that with this face. And I'm going to go, hold on a second, put that angle back. So now I can apply an angle to it. And I'm going to make it 20 degrees. Okay. Now, you want to make sure that blade is 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 locked to that um, hub. If I rotate that hub, that blade doesn't go crazy. Now, um, we want to go and we'll do a circular component pattern with the blade. We're going to have three of them. The, the circular pattern will be this um, cylinder here, and I'm going to go OK. And that's it. So we're nearly there. Um, it looks good when you when you 3D print it and you, you put the glazing putty on and you sand it and then you spray paint it. It's a nice project, OK? Um, so we're nearly done. So I'm just going to save my assembly. Wind, wind turbine assembly. Now the last thing you're going to need a shaft. It's three. Now hold on, we need bearings. Um, so let's go to McMaster Car. I wouldn't buy your bearings at McMaster Car. I would buy them on eBay. It's a lot cheaper. Um, but I'm going to type in bearings. I just want to get the model. Ball and roller bearings. I don't care whether it's shielded or open. It's just for a radial uh, direction. The measurement will be in inches. The shaft diameter is 3 eighths. The outer diameter is going to be 9, 29 divided by 32. Let's see what that is. 29 divided by 32 is 0 0.90, which will work for us. Um, the width is 5 sixteenths. Buy the cheapest one you can. It's $9. We'll, I'll, I'll, we'll save this. I'll drag it into the to the assembly. Let's try that again. Why is that not working? Interesting. Okay, let's delete that. Okay, let's try it again. We want a concentric mate. There we go. And then this face with that. Um, okay, now we have a bearing. I'm going to hit the um, hide all types to so get rid of that sketch information. I'll click the bearing and press Control C and Control V. And we could do it again. I'll go from there to there. Concentric. And then that face to there. What you're going to do when you're assembling this is you're going to put the two bearings in. You're going to put both sides of the nacelle. Um, both sides of the nacelle. Um, no, let me. I have to think about that now for a second. We right, have both bearings in. Um, I'm going to. Let's measure this. We need another shaft. So from there to here is 3.55. We make it 3.75. Let's open this shaft up. We go save as, 
a copy. This is the wind turbine main shaft. Okay, um, I'm going to right click here and we'll make this 3.75 and I'll go okay. We'll insert the main shaft. It's three eighths. And put, lock it into there. That looks good. Let's see, does it work? It stays there. Okay, that's good. So that, that's how your shaft is going to work. Um, okay. Okay, give me a second here. We need a way to ensure that if somebody grabs this hub, that the whole shaft doesn't pull out. One way we did it was if we cut a groove in here, um, we can insert an E-clamp. If you want it, so th I would make this shaft out of aluminium. Um, just get a three eighths aluminium. I would cut it with a hacksaw, put it in a, in a drill chuck, and mark where you want this groove to be. And you can use a hacksaw. Just hit, touch it off the side, and you will create a groove, right? So let's let's model it, or let's get a part first anyway. So we go E clamp. Is it an E clamp? E style retaining ring. This is what we want right here. It's for a shaft diameter three eighths. Just pick the cheapest one. Save, and let's drop it in here. Okay. So uh, we have the shaft. We have the two bearings. Um, and we want to ensure if, if somebody grabs this that they can't pull it out which they it can now we want this is called a retaining ring uh, an e style retaining ring what you want to do is you go to mcmaster car and you can see that the groove width is 0 0.039 um, if you have a lathe um, this is going to be no problem you would just put the shaft in the lathe and you would just cut a little groove chances are you don't have access to a lathe if you want to make this Put the shaft in a, in the chuck of a drill bit, tighten it up, and you're just going to score a really small um, groove using um, a hacksaw blade. Don't make it too thick. You're just you're, you 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 want to score it. Try the retaining ring. If it's not deep enough, do it again until you can get the retaining ring on there. Okay. So um, let's let's create. Um, let's oh, let's. I'm going to right click on this. And I'm going to edit the part. I'm going to hit the space bar and go normal to. And I'm going to click on it. And um, I want to see. This is the plate. No. Okay. We're going to have to get out of here just for one second. So I'm going to click on this top plane. And I'm going to go mate. And I'm going to mate it to there. I'm going to mate, mate, mate it um, that it's parallel or, or coincident. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to go okay. I'm going to click on the on it again, and I'm going to click on the top plane. Look how look how it's like it's 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 per, it's normal too. I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to go edit part. I'm going to click on the top plane again, and I'm going to create a sketch on the top plane. That's a pain. Let's try that again. Okay, will it, will it, can we look at it dead on? No. There we go. And I'm going to draw a rectangle. Something like that. Okay. Now let's get some dimensions. 0 0.0039 is the groove width. Point zero three nine is the width. Um, for a 3 eighths um, shaft, the, sh the, the groove diameter should be 0 .03, 0 
so what do we need to do? We need to get a center line. And the from there to there across it is 0 0.303. The distance from there to there will make it 0.15. Too much. Let's make it 0.125. Okay? It's all black. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to do um, a revolve cut. And we're just going to go, okay, 360 degrees. We've just created ourselves a nice little slit. And uh, so you can make that with a hacksaw. Just be careful, okay? We're going to click that face to that face. You've seen this before. You've Anyone who's taken my uh, SolidWorks class, you've used these retainer rings before. So now, now you know how it... So, so SolidWorks will give you the, the dimensions that you need. Um, now, if, if Johnny grabs this uh, hub and wants to yank it out, the retainer ring is going to stop it. The bearings are going to provide a nice... Um, a nice bearing, a nice, a nice surface, and it will spin like crazy. Um, all right, let's save our work. And what we're going to do is we're going to create. This is the the wind turbine nacelle left. We need a corresponding wind turbine nacelle right. So I'm going to go mirror components. All right, we're going to mirror them across that face. Um, we're going to create an opposite hand version, okay, right there, opposite hand version, and I'm going to go okay. Now, if I click here, it's saying that it's, no, 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 let's undo that. Let's press Control Z. Let's just delete it, that wasn't right. Let's try it again. Um, mirror components. Components to mirror the nacelle. The mirror plane is going to be this face, okay? We're going to create an opposite hand version press right again you're going to create um, a new file it's going to be called wind wind turbine nacelle right and I'll go save and we're nearly there how do these two things get connected together I need to show you now um, just while I while I'm thinking of it now let's close this down what do you owe me what are you going to submit to canvas you're going to submit four drawings. They're going to be on 11 by 17. The first is going to be a hub drawing, which is going to look like that. It's going to look lo very nice. The second one will be a base drawing. I'm, I'm, too, I'm not doing the drawings for you. You should be able to do this. This should be a piece of cake. The mass drawings. Um, the last one will be an assembly drawing. It doesn't. Your title block doesn't have to look like this, but it can if you want. Chris Ray was the original designer, and he did this you know he did this in a basic SolidWorks class that's how good he is um, I want you're gonna create a drawing just like this okay you're gonna do a rendering of a nice rendering of the of the wind turbine um, the only thing that he missed I can't see this I can't see the screw holes or anything but let's we'll put that in um, so I want four drawings from you um, now I'm gonna turn this off I don't want drawings of the blade and the nacelle. That's okay. They'll just be in the assembly. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna open this part, and we're gonna create a sketch. No, don't do that. Let's create. Click on the face, and we're gonna go um, hall wizard. And I'll show you how these two parts are gonna go together. Um, hall wizard. Um, we're gonna use a 440 screws. Anyone that's making this in Europe or Asia or Africa or whoever, South America, uh, you guys are using um, metric. Um, you could use like an M3 or an M4 or something. I think an M5 would be a bit big. Uh, find something that's close to a 440. Anyway, um, we're going to put a screw there and a screw there and a screw there and a screw there. Let's make... Um, these three vertical, we'll make that horizontal, we'll make that vertical, we'll make that horizontal. Um, let's do a center line. What you're going to do is is let's put the holes in now. When you 3D print it, you might have to run it. You might have to go in there with a tap, and tap it out. Um, we'll make this 0.75. 
No, let's try that point seven five. That'll do the job. Um, symmetrical. And then from there to there, let's make it one point seven five. Okay. Uh, the depth of it is going to be. Um, we'll make it blind. We'll make the depth 0.5. Okay. Is that going to break on through? Yes, it is. We're going to make it 0.375. It doesn't have to be that thick at all. And we'll go okay. Now, when you 3D print these parts, um, you'll just have a small hole, and you'll be able to, you'll be able to tap that with a 440 tap. Okay. Um, let's save that. Okay. Uh, the other side is going to have a counter bore. Um, let's open. Let's open this part. And what's going on here? Does this have? Um, see, this is after. Unfortunately, this is after. Um, uh, this might work in our favor. Um, can I? whole thread give me one second now I'm going to edit this part alright um, let's go back in here I need to break this link, but it's probably too late. I should have done it when I did it at the start. Um, I'm going to have to delete this again. Um, and let's try that again. So we have our, our, our holes. Um, mirror components. Um, create opposite hand version. Um, we'll go custom, we'll call it wind turbine nacelle right um, we we'll call it right number two break link to original part and we'll go ok save all rebuild can we open this up? Can I can I delete that on this one here? And if I go back to the original one, is that going to be deleted as well? No, they're still there. Good. Okay. Um, let's open this up. And um, I'm going to create a plane. Now don't bloody get hung up. So let's. Um, what what's next? We need to we need to um, model up or we need to put in four um, four forty counter bore holes. I'm going to click that face, and I'm going to click now. See, I want I want to click a plane that's out here somewhere. Um, how can I do that? Let's. What about there? We can go there. If I click this out here. Um, now what happens if I do a curve? Top plane. Um, yeah, I need a point is what I need. Um, what about this? If I go, I go this one. And maybe that, no. Um, Oh, that's not going to work. Um, okay, watch this. I have an idea. We'll we'll get a plane, and we'll just uh, flip it. Uh, one inch will do the job. Um, 
yeah I think that can work um, okay now you're gonna like this um, let's go back to the assembly I'm gonna click this in the cell and this in the cell I'll right click I'm gonna go isolate and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find the location of those four holes I'm gonna edit this part edit part I'm gonna turn on the hidden lines okay let's see if we can look at this okay I'm gonna I'm gonna um, click on that plane I'm gonna go hole wizard and I'm gonna click on um, counter bore it's gonna be for a number four um, positions I'm gonna lock into the center of that that's not gonna work for me uh, the center of there the center of there and the center of there there's gonna be an issue at the top um, it's going to be for a p um, socket, a socket head cap screw, which will make it a bit smaller. Uh, end condition is going to go through all, um, and then let's go OK. Um, OK. Now what happened there, I'm going to turn this back on, what happened there is that the we need to increase the depth of the, the counter bore itself. Um, so what do I need to do? I right click here, um, see what's happening? And what we'll do is we'll go in there and we'll go um, head clearance, is that what we want? Ah uh, yeah, look at that now. Okay, so we just bring that head clearance in, I'll go okay. and. Uh, see that's not great there I'm not a big fan of that um, okay but what we can do is we can turn this off um, just hide this one we need to make these holes come in a little bit more so let's edit this let's make this um, 0.625 that'll work let's save it let's press uh, rebuild the whole assembly let's turn on the nacelle right and now look at that that's what you want and basically um, I'm just uh, um, that's it's the it's the it's the 440 socket head screws that will just pull that together okay um, now if I take a section of this can kind of see how it all goes together okay so there's your ball bearings your shaft your retaining ring you could epoxy this part into there this would be a nice view to include okay what's the distance we need uh, the last thing we need are a couple of screws so the distance from there to there is a half an inch is that right now it's more than that it's an inch so we'll go to McMaster car screws socket head cap screws 440 the length is going to be one inch full threads socket head black will do the job um, okay let's drag it into the assembly now um, okay let's mate there to there this seems very long and that to that seems very long hmm. let's see what's going to happen there I'm going to take a section view yeah that works um watch this I'm gonna I'm, I'm getting lazy now I'm gonna go um, sketch driven pattern okay the components the pattern are going to be uh, this this screw uh, the sketch that I want is going to be um, it's going to be in this sketch um, component origin will that selected point 
Hmm, bounding box center. See, it's not quite right. Um, that's not going to work. So we just have to do it manually. You know, um, right, I'll save that. Um, save all. If I can right click on both of those and change the transparency, you can kind of see what's going on there. That's kind of a nice view there. Um, be a nice thumbnail that. Uh, I'll go print screen. Um, what can I say? That's it. Um, Believe it or not, this is my second time doing this video. I lost the first video, so I, I've probably gone a little bit fast. Um, you could probably make those screws 632s even, um, uh, you know. But you should. This should be. A, it should be a workable assembly. Um, what I want from my class is um, you guys that, that owe me work. Um, I want the. I want the assembly model perfect. Um, this drawing could probably do a better job. Um, it's not too bad. I want all your drawings on 11 by 17. You owe me four drawings. Um, I'll give you a date when those need to be submitted. Um, make sure you include um, all the parts. Um, you know, um, make sure all the parts are in the assembly. Um, uh, you guys um, in the world who are, are modeling this up, you should honestly uh, 3D print it and do a nice job of it. Um, but that's it. Um, is there anything else I'm missing? Um, that's it. That's the project.